Welcome to NARAL's The Morning After. Each Thursday, our podcast brings you the latest on reproductive health care, progressive politics, and the fight to keep abortion safe and legal. NARAL's The Morning After is a production of NARAL Pro Choice Ohio. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ProChoiceOH. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Gabe. Hi, I'm Randy. I'm Jamie. It's been a while. I yes. know. Okay. I missed the purple memo today, I guess. Uh, it's always a purple day. <laughs> <laughs> we got new t-shirts too. The, this isn't one of them, but they're in a box over there. They look real nice. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So since you guys have uh, been out doing stuff, uh, the Supreme Court nomination is really heating up, and that's where we're going to start today. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the first hearing has yet to be held. We're still in that sort of you know, learning more about Neil Gorsuch, none of which has given me any confidence of that. No. Um, But the, the big point um, for us here in Ohio is that, you know, we have two members of the Senate Mm -hmm. uh, and right now one of them has stood up and said, Hey, listen, I am opposing this guy. And that's Sherrod Brown. So Senator Sherrod Brown is our guy. Um, You and I uh, went to his office with some constituents. How would you say that went? Um, I thought it went very well. You know, obviously they're on our side, but it's just always good to remind um, the people who are with us that they have, you know, support and that they have, you know, the political cover to go out there and really fight for us, which is what a lot of the progressive people need right now, because we're in like, I feel like we're in the super minority um, so yeah, th- that was a really good meeting. Uh, we didn't yeah. actually see him, but we spoke to his aide, Ellen, and she was very nice and just, you know, talked about the reasons why, uh, we're not going to support him, um, including all the cases, which not I'm sure we'll go Gorsuch, over. Right, yeah. Right. Not supporting Gorsuch. Um, is it Gorsuch or Gorsuch? Gorsuch. Oh, okay. I've been I've, saying I've, it I've, wrong the whole time. I've heard many like knowledgeable people saying Gorsuch. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, so I, uh, we had like five or six people come. Um, yeah, cool. just a nice little constituent meeting, but I thought it went really well. Right. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? The Congress people are actually scheduling constituent meetings because most of the Republicans are not. Uh, yeah, I know, a, right? A different topic. Our legislator, our our legislators that are with us are right. happy to see us, but yeah, <laughs> the other people are definitely running <laughs> yes, away. They have to be tracked down mm-hmm. apparently and made to speak to people. Which is a shame. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. That's really a shame because we literally pay their salaries. They work for us. They're supposed to be supporting us. And how are you going to say, I'm not going to do town halls (laughs) because I don't like it or Mm whatever. Like, that's your job. Uh And literally, they're the only people who keep just not doing their job Mm -hmm. and think that it's okay, but everybody else is lazy and that's why they need to cut everything. We just need (laughs) to do better. Uh Like, y'all work a little over a hundred days a year and we're lazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> but fortunately, uh, we did not get that sort of rejection from Sherrod Brown's office. Yes. yes. Um, Cause he's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, I've, I've taken constituents to meet with his staff on several occasions for, for different healthcare, um, legislation, starting ironically with mm-hmm. the Pence bill back in like 2011 when, when Mike <laughs> Pence was still evil, but, uh, for different reasons. Uh, every time I've gone in there, mm-hmm. we sit down with the staff and you know, the, the constituents that I've brought with me, they're ready. They've got their talking points. They know what they want to say. Mm-hmm. And Sherrod's staffer will sit there and basically say, well, welcome. It's important that you came because, and they'll list off the reasons. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 da. And it's like, they're reciting our talking points back to it every time mm-hmm. without fail. They yes. know the stuff front and back. They know exactly yeah. uh, why he is standing up for Ohioans. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, this time, uh, it's, it's because Gorsuch is not an acceptable nominee, uh, for the high court. He's taken Mm -hmm. the side of a governor trying to defund Planned Parenthood. That's not okay. Um, he's taken the side of bosses through one of his, uh, uh, court decisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bosses were looking to deny their employees coverage for birth control. Um, and he was nominated by Donald Trump who, blatantly said, hey, I'm going to pick a judge that's going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Yes. Yeah. This is the threat to yeah. Roe that everybody's worried about for years. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he wrote that book about being against um, assisted, I guess, people, you know, being able to end their own life. 
Mm -hmm. um, just because he was making the case that even if they feel like they're terminally ill or that's what they want to do, then that's not okay, which it makes me feel like he would definitely be against abortion mm -hmm. if he's against right. grown people making their own decision. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that hearing starts on March 30th. We'll definitely be 20th. Like 20th sorry. I read 320 and said 330. Yeah. <clears throat> so March 20th. And so we'll definitely be letting folks know about how to get involved in those kinds of things and, and making sure that we're taking care of Sherrod and making sure that we're supporting his office and his, mm -hmm. his role as much as possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first day of this nomination, um, Sherrod Brown had issued a statement um, I mean, he, he was in opposition to this uh, nomination straight from the start. Um, his office released this statement. He said, the people of Ohio deserve Supreme Court justices who will defend the rights of working families over Wall Street and corporate, corporate special interests. And Judge Gorsuch's record doesn't pass that test. I cannot support any nominee who does not recognize that corporations are not people. The Supreme Court has enormous influence over the lives of everyday Ohioans, and any nominee must be willing to defend their rights to make their own health care decisions, collectively bargain for safe workplaces and fair pay, and be protected from discrimination and Wall Street greed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sherrod Brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and he's not just, and before anybody start on the other side started talking about how he's just blocking everything from happening, he also, about a week and a half ago or something like that, here at Ohio State, the John Glenn School announced like a, 70 page workers support bill that included all kinds of amazing paid leave, paid sick time, family leave, um, collective bargaining, all these kinds of things that really do support workers in our state and across the country. So he really doesn't just sit there and block things from happening, but really has some really great progressive ideas on how we can make things better in our state and across the country too. So he's awesome. And if he did, so what? <laughs> what did they do the last eight exactly. years? Not a damn thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. whatever. Right. <laughs> Hypocrisy is right. Yes. <laughs> uh, the plan that Jamie mentioned is in the Columbus Dispatch this past week. We'll put a link in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, there's there's other stuff, not just uh, what's going on uh, domestically. Just mm -hmm. the entire Trump administration right off the bat is like a global mess. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, Trump Trump gave his, his speech before Congress, which, you know, he didn't vomit on his shoes. So, you know, he, <laughs> so he said he was presidential. Yeah, uh -huh. That's all. I didn't watch it because, uh, um, right. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but so uh, immediately after that, um, ruining his lovely media cycle. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because he can't stop himself. Right. <laughs> no. Because he's not presidential no, in any way, shape, or form. No, he's not. Stop expecting a 70-year-old <laughs> man to change. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, y'all. Like, please. Right. If the media just... <sighs> he's still taping his ties together. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dude. But yeah, it, immediately after that, Jeff Sessions, uh, you know, just destroyed the media cycle with his whole connection to the Russians. Um, and then I was watching Rachel Maddow uh, because she was looking into all of these, you know, just huge connections, not just tiny little meetings between members of the Trump administration and, you know, the Russian ambassador. Uh, that's, that's not good, but it, you know, it goes way more than that. Uh, last week, Rachel was uh, illustrating all the examples of uh, the dictator in Azerbaijan. <laughs> And okay. it, yeah, and so the the country over there has been, uh, you know, the the I won't say leadership, but the dictator there has basically been robbing that country of their oil money, and you know, in as many corrupt ways as possible, spreading this cash around, and she can connect it to some of the real estate deals that Trump has done, both uh, hmm. properties that he's sold in the U.S. and uh, buildings that he's been building over in that country, and it's yeah. all just shady as fuck. Of course. And so she's going through all of this and detail this and detail this and detail this. And then the end of her story is basically, and in Congress, the ranking member of the banking committee, Sherrod Brown, is calling for an investigation. <laughs> like, like the world is threatened. And here's Sherrod. <laughs> yes. As I got like this. The guy. <laughs> yes. And he's our guy. And yes, that was like, God. yes, you know, Ohioans yes. to save the world. So. Yes. <laughs> Good. Like, yeah. The fact yeah. that they have said, um, what's that dude, Chaffetz? Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to investigate. He's the chairman of like, the government oversight. Yeah. Who is doing the Benghazi like. Oh, he loved investigations yeah. before. 
Oh, yes. and and, and the, uh, he did the Planned Parenthood shit. Yes. I mean, he did uh, yeah. he every Everything. investigation against Democrats. He was all for, but this one, no, 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 we don't need to right. investigate that. That's a waste of money. I mean, Hillary had to sit in front of his committee for 11 straight hours. Yes. Joe Richards had to sit in front of his committee for hours and hours. Uh -huh. Yes. They can't oh, look for into shit, this that shit? that wasn't even... Yeah, real. Yeah, that wasn't even real. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean... Yeah. And I think yesterday, he, um, Chaffetz even said that he was going to look into this wiretapping bullshit. Oh, my God. That doesn't exist. So, yeah, he's going to look into all this fake bullshit, but he's not actually going to look at the real uh, connections between Trump and... The right. Russians, so you know, whatever. So yeah, so Sherrod Brown is is gonna come to the rescue like he always does and and save us all. So go Sherrod, go Sherrod, go Sherrod. Yes. Elections have consequences. We have to reelect him in 2018. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Because there like... will be no one to save the world if we don't. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So <laughs> that's enough of my opinions on Sherrod Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you haven't had a chance to talk much yet, uh, <laughs> you, which is good because now it's your turn to explain <laughs> the GOP replacement for Obamacare because I don't get it. All right. So everybody stop checking their email or doing the 50 other things and like concentrate for just a minute because if you don't, <laughs> you're going to get lost. So we've started the process of repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Okay. But this is not going to do everything. So what they're doing now, the American Health Care Act, so we're replacing the ACA with the AHA, okay. um, is really just the first step because it's just budget reconciliation. So they're using this special process because budget reconciliations only need 51 votes. You can't filibuster a budget reconciliation. Okay. So if they use budget reconciliation to start this process, they've the barely Dems, got the votes. They've got the votes to do it, maybe, because now the conservative Republicans don't like it either. So that's right. a little bit of a question. So th this first step can't do a lot of the policy stuff. So it can't get rid of the contraceptive mandate. It can't get rid of the pregnancy coverage mandate. It can't get like that policy in depth stuff can't happen here. Just in the first step, those yes. things can't happen. Yes. Maybe later, but not now. And they couldn't happen concurrently because a lot of these things could happen inside of agencies. Like the, mm -hmm. you know, Department of HHS can just stop enforcing the contraceptive mandate. So they can just selectively decide what they're enforcing, what they're not enforcing. So they can do some of that administratively. But this bill itself can only be things like monetarily. So it's the, it's a, slowly eliminating some of the Medicaid expansion stuff and blocking some enrollment increases in Medicaid. It's reworking how low-income people get the tax credits or the tax rebates on mm -hmm. the coverage that they buy through the exchanges. So it's all this mo money-related stuff in this first step. So stay tuned because this is not going to be the only fight on this and the biggest piece of this that will have the most impact for the most people immediately is they will block Planned Parenthood and any other abortion care facility or somebody who is related to an abortion facility from getting any kind of Medicaid reimbursements for any kind of services provided. So That's some bullshit right there. Yeah, some bullshit right there. So uh, as everyone knows already, um, Abortion clinics cannot use because they are blocked from using Medicaid for abortion care services themselves. But a lot of these centers also provide birth control and pap smears and cancer screenings and all these other kinds of health care services. And just like when you go with your private insurance to the doctor and your insurance company reimburses the facility for the services they actually provided for you, right? Medicaid works. Medicaid Paid, yes, works the right the same way. Yes. And the fact that when a Medicaid recipient goes into Planned Parenthood or their private doctor's office or wherever they choose to go, which is the major point here, they're choosing what healthcare provider they go to, um, that healthcare provider gets reimbursed for those services that are actually provided. So it's not like the federal government is handing Planned Parenthood a million dollar check. They're sending reimbursements for healthcare services yeah. provided it's, at those oh, you centers. Did a pap smear. Here's, Here's the $200 for that pap smear. Probably $50, but yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Medicaid you know. reimbursement rates are pitiful, but yes. Right. You know, okay, you did, you know, <clears throat> 10 well, well woman exams this week. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the, you know, here's the thousand dollars or whatever that, you know, reimbursement rate is. Yeah. Well, and I think the biggest point on that is that Medicaid reimbursement rates do suck so bad. So, so many private healthcare um, companies or doctor's offices yeah. don't take it. 
They are not Medicaid offices. So it's not like a Medicaid recipient can go to any doctor in the world, you know, for their care. There's only a select few places because there's only a select few places that can kind of compensate and sure. subsidize the money that they're losing because their Medicaid reimbursement rates are so bad. So in a lot of communities, Planned Parenthood is one of the few places right. these women can go for care. Because when the, when there's a, a smaller number of options, it, it first off increases the wait time because mm -hmm. everybody's trying to get in there and so there's no appointment available. Yeah. That's when you have like two months, you know, to go get, you know, whatever that lump is checked out. Yeah. Yeah. And that ain't okay. No, it's not. And so, you know, we'll see. It's a one year pause, they say. Just like the Muslim bans on a ban, but we won't go there. Um, <laughs> it's a one year pause so they can really figure out what was happening with all those videos and everything. Oh, that's the stupidest bullshit I've ever uh -huh. heard. Yes. They're going back to the videos. They're going back to the videos and all these other accusations against Planned Parenthood. They really want to make sure that the money is not being used for abortions and they want to make sure all I mean, they, they just want to make sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Health departments I investigate can't. this all the time. The IRS looks at all, you know, audits all of their records. You know, uh, the state auditor Dave Yost in Ohio did a full audit of it and found absolutely nothing wrong last year. Like, yeah, Mike Dewine, you know, looked and failed so hard in what he said he was going to do. He had to make up some other bullshit to cover up the fact that he yeah. That's started what's a happen. wild goose hunt to begin with. They will find nothing but make something up because their plant the purpose is not to see if Planned Parenthood is doing good and if they're not doing good we're going to defund them the purpose is to defund Planned Parenthood now let's find a reason a good reason mm -hmm. why we're going to do it because yes, it's going to exactly do it right. yeah I just need a good or tell you a good mm -hmm. reason why I'm doing it yeah that's they I'm really like so disgusted and, and done with don't them. look at the Russians over there yeah yes, exactly 100 exactly. exactly oh my god well, like um, yeah and yeah. this whole temporary bullshit I mean the Hyde Amendment was a one-year Hyde Amendment to block. And that was like 30 some years ago. Yes. Now. Yeah. Yes. So 40 years ago. Was my year I was born. So yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, yeah. So that was supposed to be a one year thing and it's been passed every year for the last 40 years. So, you know, the fact that they're saying, oh, it's just a one year pause. Bullshit. Yeah. Right. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. So that's what's going on at the federal government. They've already started clearing some hurdles. Mm. Right now, the biggest hurdle they're trying to clear is that the really, really conservative Tea Party people are calling this Obamacare light because they can't make the radical changes mm -hmm. that is necessary for right. them to be happy in this process because of the way they're doing it. So a yeah, lot of I haven't the, seen any member of Congress come out and say, hey, I really love this. Yes. I mean, Paul Ryan, of course, because his <laughs> you know cronies wrote it, but they wouldn't even let other conservatives mm -hmm. like Rand Paul see the bill. He was yes. standing in the basement of the House office buildings with a photocopier <laughs> on wheels saying, hey, can I get a copy of that? And there was a little staffer like, I'm sorry, we're not allowed to let you see the bill. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't just let them not let Dems read yeah, it. They did it. Like Republican, Republican members of the U.S. Senate were not allowed to see the bill before it was unveiled. That's not how you do things that are good. Yeah. Let's say you do <laughs> evil shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and since then, I mean, you know, super arch conservative Jim Jordan here in Ohio mm -hmm. was just talking about how he doesn't like this. Rob Portman, um, who, you know, has been kind of towing the line for, for Trump this entire time. He's expressed concern about it. You know, none of the Democrats seem to like mm -hmm. it. I don't, and, and they were talking about how we're going to get this done by the Easter break. I don't see shit happening between doctors, and insurers and hospitals. All three don't like it. Yeah. Thank and you. they can't agree on anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I'm so done with them. I'm so, so I mean, done. this really seems to be like the biggest turd sandwich ever yeah. rolled out onto the floor of Congress. Yeah, I mean, yes. one of, I think one of the things that really struck me is they're totally redoing all the tax credits and those kind of things. It's really, it's really going to screw poor people. Yes. That's why I was making that face and shaking my head when yeah. you were talking about it. If I'm already making $10 an hour, I can't even fucking pay my rent. How am I going to go out and pay premiums? Mm -hmm. And what is a tax credit at the end of the year going to help me? I couldn't get it. It's in actually the first a monthly. Place. They did actually fix that. It's a monthly, but it's still, but still a tax credit. It's, it's not going to help you if you no. don't have the money to pay for it to begin with. Yeah. And it is, it's a tax credit. So if you don't have a tax burden, you can't get the money back. The, the one, the Obamacare ones were reef were I can't remember rebates or whatever they call them where you can actually get it even if you don't have a tax burden so you know it really does change it and also the other thing that really what like immediately struck me is completely evil 
um, Obamacare says that old people can't be charged more than three times a young person's rate. Mm -hmm. And this new American Health Care Act will allow insurers to charge old people five times what they charge a young person. Why? At the yes. same at the same time yes. that they were Why? yeah at the same time they're actually age rating the tax credit so a young person will get more tax credit which is kind of nice because they make less money but the old person will actually have less of a and tax pay credit more. and pay more turd sandwich yes. <laughs> this is terrible yeah it's well, gonna you know be what? a nightmare. I, okay. I, I feel bad for my grandmother. I feel I really do feel bad for mm -hmm. my grandmother, but I don't feel bad for the all the other old people, <laughs> the, all the other old white people who voted for him yeah. and who are going to get screwed over. That's what you get. That's mm -hmm. what you voted for. But you know what? I'm pissed because my grandmother is going to be in that fold because she's 77 years old. She's already living on a budget. She can't mm -hmm. afford that. She has cancer. And yeah, that pisses me off. But you know what? People have to realize that when you when you have people out here and they're not educated you're giving them this misinformation but at the same time it's like they could have had it they could have had the real information they wanted information they didn't want to see it yeah. but at the same time it's like we have to make sure that going forward from this we are really talking to people about what is truly going to happen when you vote for these people yeah. because again we see they have there's consequences mm -hmm. and at the same time you ha had all those people saying well i don't take everything they say yeah. literally like mm -hmm. i can't i really can't like why wouldn't you if someone's running for office and they're giving you the platform why would you not believe it mm -hmm. and we see this is exactly what they get in the office and do yep. he's and done everything he said he yes was do. and screw every other people people over and who are the people going to be screwed over young people poor people black and brown people but they don't give a fuck because we don't vote for republicans anyway mm -hmm. so they're just going to keep screwing you over so you better next time get your ass out and vote so this shit doesn't happen again because that's why i'm really pissed yeah. off this morning like this plan is a ridiculous plan it's not going to help anyone it's going to have fewer people on it yes and like gabe said it's a complete shit sandwich mm -hmm. and i'm yeah. done now <laughs> You know okay. what? We're going to leave it at that because I think Randy <laughs> handled it the best way. And I'm okay. going to transition into good stuff. Yes. Can we transition into good stuff? Yes, yes please. So, you know, in our rare change of um, usual workings in the Ohio State House, something good happened. <laughs> Yay! And so. Um, I love that noise. <laughs> We're going to use it as our good stuff noise. <laughs> um, so State Representative Amelia Sykes from the Akron area. She is one of our greatest champions. She's an amazing state legislator who's always one of the smartest, if not the smartest person in every room she is in. Awesome. Yes. Um, had introduced last year with a Republican um, co-sponsor um, at that point, Representative Kunze, now Senator Kunze, um, a bill to update Ohio's domestic violence laws because... Um, right now in ohio you cannot get a protection order if you don't live with the person so mm -hmm. victims of dating violence who are domestic violence victims could not get a protection order unless they were living together married or you know that one in one of those kinds of situations so if you were just dating this person and they started to become violent and you weren't living together you couldn't get a protection order so this updates a lot of the protections for people um experiencing dating violence as, mm -hmm. uh, um, as a subcategory of domestic violence it failed to pass through at the end in lame duck because they were just being stupid. They're probably too busy passing the six week and 20 week abortion ban. Of so, um, an amazing turn of events, the speaker of the house actually made rep Sykes's bill house bill one, making it the like number one priority of the Ohio house. It passed through last week. Um, and a change events we'll go to in a minute cause it's bad. And I want to keep saying good stuff. Um, <laughs> um, they kind of rushed it through. They did like one hearing on it because they had had full hearings before. So in another turn of events, they rushed something through that was good, not bad. What? Um, and it came up for a vote and is now in the Ohio Senate. So it passed the Ohio House with extremely huge margins. Um, unfortunately, to take this in a slightly negative way for a second, not unanimously as initially announced. Mm -hmm. they, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I saw two people voted against it. Uh -huh, yeah. So if you look at the board, so in the Ohio House, there's this big, huge board that has everybody's name on it, and then they turn green, yellow, or red based on how they vote. So it's either green, they voted yes, red, they voted no, yellow, they just failed to vote. 
they weren't there that day, whatever. Um, initially, it's all green and yellow. Every, so initially, it was a unanimous vote announced, but um, very quickly, immediately after, two state representatives, Gabe will tell you their names. Oh, uh, Nino Gable. Vital and uh, the other guy. Brinkman. Tom Brinkman. Tom Brinkman. <laughs> remember the other one so thank you yeah and um actually went up to the sergeant the the speaker of the house and changed their votes from no vote to no so it was not in fact unanimous so in the show notes we'll give you all of their contact information and you can call their offices and ask them why they didn't think yeah these violence. guys couldn't stand there on the floor and vote no uh-huh they, they had to be, they chicken had to chicken be sneaky about it yeah chicken shits why Spineless chicken shits. why we're yes. asking why why Yes, because that's what men who hate women are, chicken <laughs> shits. <laughs> Pretty much. And then the third call you can make is to Rep Sykes' office and thank her for always being amazing and wonderful and um, for everything that she does. So yes. those are your kind of three Ohio legislative yes. things to do this week. Because I have to fact check you, though. You got something wrong. Oh, I got something wrong? Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't Kunze. Oh, sorry. Uh, who is now Senator Kunze. It was Representative Christy Coons. Oh, who was okay. a Democrat. So the first okay. version of the bill was Democratic hmm. sponsored. Okay. And now uh, Amelia, Amelia worked out a bipartisan solution. So yeah. um, it was co-sponsored um, by a Republican this year. Nathan Manning was the other main lead sponsor on the bill, which was an awesome thing. So not all the men, Republican men are complete chicken shits right. in the Ohio legislature. And, and most, yes, most of the, them voted for the bill. Mm-hmm. Just two people didn't. Why? Tell us why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why don't you think yeah. a victim of domestic uh, of dating violence needs can get a should get a protection order? Yeah. Yeah. Are and you afraid the ones who voted anyway? for it though shouldn't get a cookie? I mean, yeah. it was a pretty easy thing to say yes for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't give them any credit. <laughs> but yeah, but it just makes the ones who voted no even worse. <laughs> That's <sounds> like <laughs> true. Like seriously, yes. Yes. everybody else voted. Yes. I know. Yes. How could you not? Yeah, it's not a controversial bill. No. Like, okay, sing so, us out, Randy. Yay, let's get it on. We have a lot of stuff coming up, actually. It's very exciting. Um, Been running around trying to get everything finalized. So this Saturday, uh, we're going to be here in the office. We're going to have a learn and take action brunch. Um, I'll use the word brunch loosely, but there will be food. (laughs) (laughs) Food and drink for everyone. Um, And we're just basically going to give, uh, you know, a most recent update of what's happening at the State House, uh, why we need to be concerned about the budget, um, because it's a budget year and they try to sneak stuff in there. Um, And also we're going to end with an action um, of supporting um, Senator Brown, who you know, you know, we've been talking about this whole time, and just letting him know that he has lots of cover and lots of people out here who, you know, support him and appreciate that he's, you know, going out there for Ohioans and all Americans, um, trying to keep this crazy administration in check as much as we possibly can. Which, again, I feel like we're in the super minority, so we need some good stuff right. <laughs> to happen. So yeah. we'll be. Um, here this Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon, I'm doing that. Then on Tuesday, March 21st, yes. Hold on, we got a couple things between then. Okay, Okay, cool. Um, Sorry, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Uh, So March 9th, uh, up in Cleveland. That's today, right? That's tonight, so if you can get to it tonight. uh, The Percy Sky Lecture uh, at the Dittrich Mm-hmm. Um, Contraceptive uh, Museum. Yes. Um, cool. So folks can find out information in this in the show notes, but um, we've really gotten um, a ton of stuff on our Facebook events page. So if you're on our Facebook page, click events, and not only will you find stuff from our organization, but we've linked in a couple stuff from partner organizations so you can get a nice... Um, a sense of what the community is doing mm-hmm. and a pro-choice community calendar, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's happening tonight. Randy talked about the brunch on the 11th, uh, on the 16th, March 16th, up in Toledo. Uh, that is a week from today is the next Row Together Activist Boot Camp. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's the fifth one yes. that'll uh, I believe wow. get us over yes. our thousand participants. Yes. Mark. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do a Row Together in Toledo, Check that out on March 16th. And then March 21st is all you. <laughs> yeah, so then Tuesday, March 21st um, from 6.30 <laughs> to 9 p.m., um, NARAL and Planned Parenthood of Great Ohio um, and our partnership, the Women of Color Repro Freedom Happy Hour, um, is putting on our first event of the year. 
Um, we're going to, it's a collaboration with a nonprofit called Pins to Pictures, which basically is a collaborative that um, teaches women who are incarcerated um, at Dayton Corrections Facility to make their own short films. So it's going to be five short films all together. Running time is about 90 minutes. And then afterwards, we're going to have um, a small panel, about two to three people um, who work at the intersection of reproductive rights and criminal justice. Um, the direct, um, it's called Pins to Pictures. You can go Google them. Um, they have a website. So I'm very excited about it. So if you're free, definitely come out. This should be a good time. And then on Thursday, March 23rd, yep is our Cincinnati um, Learn and Take Action Night. And again, so we'll just be giving updates. Um, Stephanie from Planned Parenthood will be there. and She'll be doing um, some direct action um, training and talking about the possible defunding of Planned Parenthood. Um, so that should be a really good time. It's going to be um, at Urban Artifact, which is a brewery in Cincinnati. Um, but we have this on the Facebook event. So if you look on our Facebook page and so that's happening on the 23rd. Yeah. And then March 24th is the Women Have Options Swap for Our Sisters. If you're a regular listener, you heard Stephanie Craddock talk about that. Um, bring in some clothes, drop off 10 bucks, and then you carry out as much clothes as you want. Um, all to benefit Women Have Options March 24th. Yeah. Cool. Now, is there anything between the 24th and the 30th? Uh, no, but you have an event on the 30th, and I have an event on the 30th. So oh, okay. <laughs> please proceed. See, we got a lot of stuff going on, people. We do. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, then on March 30th, we're going to have a date and learn and take action night. Uh, so, we'll be doing another mini training. If you're in the Dayton area, that one's for you. It's going to be at the... I'm sorry. We Dublin had to change Pub. the venue. The Dublin Pub. Sorry, I just changed the menu, uh, the venue pub. yesterday. Um, so it's going to be at the Dublin Pub from 6 to 8 p.m. I don't know the exact address, but again, we have a Facebook event, so you guys can look it up. And if you're in the Dayton area, definitely come out for that. If you're in the Canton area on March 30th, uh, we've got our microphone training at the Canton Library. Um, so uh, if you're interested in that one, it's sort of a smaller group. You can email me, communications at prochoiceohio.org. Uh, info in the show notes. Um, then on April 1st, there's a Columbus Against Sexual Violence rally at the State House that's uh, being put on by some friends of ours. Uh, the 29th is the Women Have Options uh, Bowlathon. So if you want to join a bowling team, uh, you can contact womenhaveoptions.org. Uh, um, May 16th, Planned Parenthood <laughs> has it. We have the lobby day date in between then and there. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry, blew right past it. <laughs> so we, we just have everything confirmed. So hot off the press, you heard it here first. Our <laughs> annual coalition lobby day, the Freedom of Choice Ohio lobby day, will be on May 3rd at the Columbus Anthenaeum here in Columbus. So start making your transportation arrangements if you're not in Columbus and make plans to be in Columbus that day so you can talk to your legislators. Yes. Right, May 3rd. Uh, and then the last one, because Jamie has to go over to the Athenaeum to see the venue. Uh, <laughs> May 16th, Planned Parenthood has a big centennial. Uh, it's at Battelle Hall. I think this one is kind of pricey because it's a fundraiser. Yes. But, you know, we love Planned Parenthood, so we'll give them a shout out. Um, so if you want to support them, you can. Yes. And we'll see everybody next week. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.